Hello everyone, I apologize for my late upload, but welcome to my seventh video. Today we are going to work with a new framework called AV Foundation. AV Foundation has a lot of classes which can be used to play and modify audio. Although this will be a little bit challenging, we will learn a lot of beneficial programming skills that you will need to have in your skill set for your other Xcode projects. Some of these skills consist of learning how to search and retrieve a file from a project and also learning basic error handling. It is important to write pseudocode for any coding projects which requires a good deal of logic. Pseudocode is a notation resembling a simplified programming language typically used in program design. I am trying to keep this video simple so there is not much logic needed by any means in this project, but it is always good to create an outline before you do any project. Here is a pseudocode that describes the goals that we will need to accomplish in this project. Let's get started. So let's go ahead and open up the Xcode application and click on create a new Xcode project. This will be a single view application, click next, and I'm just going to call this audio, and I'll call audio player, and do not check use score data, it can be iPad or iPhone, your choice. Make sure the language is set to Swift and hit next. Create it to wherever you find is convenient. and now we have a project set up. So let's start with building the UI so we can hop into the main.storyboard file and in here I'm going to configure our, our setup so click on view controller the size will be let's go for the uh, let's go for the iPad full screen orientation will be portrait and there we go and we're gonna need a couple of things first I'm gonna draw or drag and drop a label so that will be on the center, let's do that. And I'll just call this audio, let's say audio is set up. Okay, and, just put, and we're going to hide this label later actually, so when we get our audio set up. And center that. Let's go ahead and drag in two buttons as well, one to play our audio and one to stop it. So I'll drag one here. Copy and paste. And then I'll line this up right here. So I'll call this one stop. And then this one will be called play. So this is a very simple UI, but now we can get onto the very tough but elegant code. So as you know, we have to connect our elements to our code. So we can go into the assistant editor, make some space, and we can control click and drag our label. Actually, let me change this to, that's wrong English. Is set, oh, there we go, okay. So we can drag in, control click and drag our label. Right here in the outlet section and just call this uh, set set up label or LBL and make sure it's an outlet and connect it and now we can create our two buttons as uh, IB action so our play called call it play sound make sure it's an action and then we can do one for stop stop sound uh, action and connect and now we can uh, hide our view did load in our view did load we can hide our label because our audio has not been set up yet so we can just call setup label dot hidden is equal to true and now we have that set up let's go ahead and build and run our application to make sure our UI is set up correctly Alright, so, okay, so our label is hidden because we declared that in our view did load function and our play and stop button are uh, populated the screen. So now we can get into the good stuff now. First, we're going to have to Im uh, write an import statement and I'll explain to you what it means. Okay, so 
This, we're importing a framework called AV Foundation. And what a framework is, is that it's basically like a package which contains uh, like a bunch of classes. So this UI kit has classes for our benefit of a user interface. So say in UI kit we have um, a UI label, a UI button. These all help for applications. So the AV Foundation framework helps us with our audio-visual um, needs. So say we in this application we want to play an audio and, and then stop an audio. So this is why we import this framework. So that's basically what you need to know about frameworks and this AV Foundation statement. Also, keep in mind that we will have to drag and drop a MP3 or any audio file into our project around here in our audio player file. But yeah, you can choose any file that you have on hand, anything that will be very simple. I will probably just pick one downloaded from the internet later. But now we have to create a function that will set up our audio. So I'm going to go right after our stop sound IP action function. And I'll try my best to explain all this stuff, but I really encourage you to look at Apple's documentation of all these classes that I'm about to mention right now. So let's start writing our function, and we can begin with func, uh, let's say set up, set up audio, set up audio player. And this will accept two parameters, one being the file, we can call it the file name, which is of type string. And the other being the of type, so like MP3, all that stuff of type uh, string, and this will return an AV audio player. So we can write our curly braces, and I promise you I will explain all this stuff the best I can. But first we can type this stuff in. So we're gonna get an error because we have to return an AV audio player, and we haven't done that yet. But we can start typing with let's do, we have to create our path. So in our pseudocode, I said we have to find a path, create the path to our file, our mp3 file, or any audio file, and then we can work from there. So we can first create our path, let path equal, and this will be an nsbundle dot main bundle and dot path for resource, and this will be our file name and then our of type will be of type. So let's make sure we don't have any errors there. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go over our code. So we will first start with NS bundle. So an NS bundle is an object that corresponds to a directory where program resources are stored. This directory bundles a set of resources used by an application. So basically, this NS bundle can uh, make use of these resources available to the application. And then the main bundle, this is also very simple, uh, the main bundle is a function in the NS bundle, it's a class function, and it's simply just, it just bundles, it's the bundle of the application that is running currently. So meaning if there's any resources in a certain bundle that is running, or that is, uh, that is seen in the application, so this will know as soon as we deploy this application to an iOS device, we will know that an MP3 a player, excuse me, is being accessed. So that's what the main bundle does. It's the bundle of the application that is running. And of course, this path of resource is uh, another function which accepts two parameters, and they, it basically just finds the file for you. And one quick tip, if you're ever confused on any classes or functions or any variables in Swift, there's a really handy way to check out their documentation in a quick view. So on Mac, you're going to have to hold the Alt Option key and say you can hover over NS bundle, and you'll see this little question mark, and go ahead and click it. And you'll see this whole, this huge view about this uh, NS bundle class. And it has a very nice description for you. Same thing with the uh, uh, main bundle. Just hit Alt Option, click on it, and it'll tell you it's a class function, and it tells you what it returns. So th this is a very handy tip that most programmers use. So let's get back to our function. After this path, we will need to set up a URL. And also, of course, I will explain it to you afterwards. So we can just call let URL be assigned to our nsurl dot file url with path and this will be the first or the second one and the file path will or the url will be uh... we can send it to our path that we have just created before alright what is this saying 
Okay, wants us to unwrap our uh, our path, so we can go ahead and put the exclamation mark there. All right, so now let's go through this. So an NSURL object stores the location of a resource, which in this case is our audio file. So we first have to create a path to our file, and now the URL will access the path to retrieve our audio file. So that's what the whole point of creating a URL is. So now we can actually create our audio player with these elements that we've just created. So before all this stuff, I will, uh, I will create a variable called audio player, and keep in mind this is what we will be returning is equal to an AV audio player and this is this class is from the AV foundation framework so our AV audio player and in here we can just initialize it and right here we can write do this is where our try catch error handling is gonna come in so we will say do audio player is equal to try AV audio player and this will be our contents of NS URL and this will be the URL and now we can check this out so let's see what this error says error throws f thrown errors thrown from here are not handle are not handled so right here we are trying to make sure trying to see if our audio player can be set to this value but however in the special case if this path or URL is not found we can catch this mean like a safety net and print something out so if right here we can say catch and then we can write uh we can actually just write this in our uh setup label setup label dot text is equal to file not found and then before we should probably say setup label dot hidden is equal to false and now we should probably have to return our audio player so we can write right here we can just say return audio player and there we go so check this out our setup audio player is finished so that our function is ready to go and now we can actually set this our function equal to an audio player so we can start this by declaring an audio player value right here our variable var audio player is equal to an AV audio player and we will just initialize it right here and before we play our audio I'm gonna drag and drop my file it's a smoke, in, uh, smoke on the water uh, mp3 file so I will just go to my finder and drag it on to right here and then make sure your copy items if needed box is checked and basically what this does is say if you were on uh, by accident to um, uh, to delete your file, uh, say drag and drop it to the trash. It will it will save a copy in your Xcode file. So this that's why it's pretty handy. And click on finish, and there we go. So now we can set up this audio into our AV uh, into our audio player. So now uh, let's go. Let's just do it in our view to load. So we can type audio player is equal to self dot uh, set up set up audio player and here's our nice function that we created it looks very clean that's why I'm a really big fan of it and we can just type smoke on the water smoke on the water and the type let's see the type forgot it is a mp3 so right here we can just type wow this is very laggy <laughs> okay we can just type um, mp3 and now just to test our sound we can go into our play sound function and we all we have to type is audio player which has already been set up dot play and that's a function that's already predefined in uh, AV audio player so let's go ahead and build and run this alright it's taking its time load it up alright there we go so let's click on the play button and I'll turn on my speakers and and you can hear it very loudly but now we can uh, let's add some functionality to our stop button 
So, right now, let me stop our application so we don't have smoke on the water playing out loudly. In our uh, stop sound, very simple, just like in our play sound, all we have to write is audio player dot stop. And now if we build and run our application again, turn on the speakers. Let me click on play. You can hear it, and let's stop. And check that out, and if you click on play again, and you can just test it out, it works perfectly. So, but now we also have to um, make sure our label pops up. So let's stop this application. And right now we can actually just write a, an if statement. So we can just say if audio player, or no, if audio player is set up to that, then we can write our, oh, what is it saying here? Equal, equal, okay. So, if audio player uh, is set up like that, then we can say, uh, what do we call it? Our set up label dot text, or dot hidden is equal to false. So, let's build and run this again. So our label should say audio setup. Okay, I see. Alright, we have tons of errors right now, but I will get back to you once I have fixed it. Many of you have probably spotted the error already, but this if statement looks very shady. So um let's go ahead and delete this if statement. And by the way, so we try to set up our setup label hidden to false, but it was already set to true in this view to load. So that logic is already messed up. But we can remove this in our view to load, and we can just write all this stuff in our play sound uh, function. So we can set up our audio player as soon as the uh, play, play button has been hit. And then uh, let's remove this double equal sign. So that should be working now. Still doesn't want to work. Oh, okay, we have this little curly brace that's not needed. Okay, and now we have no errors now, which is a good sign. So this setup label hidden should be true. And now we can go ahead and build it on our application after we write label or setup label dot hidden is equal to false. And let's go ahead and run it. Alright, so the button, there we go. Now we can click on play. And check that out, our audio is set up, has been run. So if we hit stop, now the, uh, the audio is stopped. We can hit play again. And there we go. So, stop this. <laughs> um, and that is our project. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And see you in the next one.